there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, come right on in, my friend. We're so glad to be here. And let me assure you, we, we are honored uh, when you tune in and you join us for these wonderful programs and uh, join with you in being thankful for the wonderful guests that God sends to us each day. Uh, all in all, it's an honor to work for him, no matter what you're doing. My family, my daughter and her husband and boys are in Nicaragua today and they are working for the Lord. They're building houses and things for the poor. Uh, whether you're on TV or as I have a Bible teacher here this morning, whatever it is, it's a pleasure and a privilege to work for the Lord. And, and the beautiful thing about it is we're all workers together. So you're with me and I'm with you and we're glad to have you. Uh, Joyce Kelly is a return guest, one of my favorites. And I think her ministry is one where you go into really heavy, demonic, satanic atmosphere. And that's the sex clubs and the adult businesses and so forth. And I've often thought, you know, if the Lord lined up all the ministries and said, take your pick, I'm not sure a lot of people would pick the one she's in, but the Lord has given her favor and they go right into these demonic clubs and minister to the girls and got some exciting stories for you today. That's another wonderful thing about homekeepers is that we can bring you these kind of people, this kind of stories. And I'm going to uh, join Stephanie in a minute. And this is, the, this is the name of the recipe, breakfast pizza margarita. I don't know where that last word came from. I promise you it's not an alcoholic drink. Maybe Stephanie knows why they would name a breakfast pizza that, but that's what it is. Uh, before though, I tell you what we're going to offer you. Uh, love getting your mail. And here, here's one that was directed to Wanda. Enjoy seeing you give your testimony today. So this was some time back. She and I were talking about some of the things she'd gone through. Here's a donation for this time. Wishing you and the crew, all of you, there at CTN the best. Stay away from the alligators. Don't you love that? This is from California. And Florida has really been getting some press, you know, all over the world for some of the alligator activity. It's very true here. So uh, thank you for that good advice, my friend. Oh, while I join Stephanie, we're going to show you how to get this. I was just going through this, how to study the Bible. You know, this, in many ways, this would be kind of like going to Bible college. Uh, here are the... Uh, chapters, uh, introduction, preparation, reading your heart to study the Bible, interpretation, discovering what the Bible means, classification, examining Bible study methods, collaboration, using study helps uh, so that you can learn even more, and motivation, putting your thoughts into action. This is yours. This full of great information book is yours for any amount. So you can use your credit card by calling 1-800-229-0059 or the address is on your screen if you want to write to us. I think this is probably one of the best investments you could ever make. It's kind of getting on, you know, just on a little faster track to understand the, the scripture. What an opportunity. I hope you'll take advantage of it. So here is my good friend Stephanie, if you've never met her. And... Mm -hmm. I want you to give your absolute honest opinion nope. of this recipe. Nope. I'm working on my facial expressions today. I'm just going to smile through this. That's it. No. <laughs> she doesn't like it. So let's do it. Okay. So we have a pizza crust. I already made pizza crust that we put in the oven and we baked. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have um, plum tomatoes sliced, mm -hmm. half a cup of mozzarella, a quarter cup of cheddar, and some fresh cut basil, mm -hmm. and like turkey bacon. And, uh, turkey, oh, wait, I'm sorry, turkey bacon. <laughs> well, she she and got I, here real early. I get here pretty early, but boy, she got here earlier, and she was not <laughs> saying real nice things about this recipe. I have two cups of egg beaters. Okay, now let's tell them why it's got... Well, okay, this is supposed to be, this is from a diabetic... Diabetic cookbook. cookbook. Okay, I get that. I'm sorry. Well, we've been getting <laughs> we've been getting requests for this. Yeah. So, di okay, egg beaters, and that's why because it's we're trying to be a little more healthy. Some uh -huh. of our recipes lately have been extra indulgent. Have been naughty. Yes. So we have I can't I'm 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 losing my brain. A half a cup of skin milk. I've never used egg beaters at home. Have you? Um, I've made omelets with them. Yes. Yes. Do they work? But good the for that? name brand egg beaters. Yes, they were. Oh, they weren't. 
<laughs> the cut right. <laughs> so we have pepper. We, do is cut right. we have pepper, and then okay. If you just want to amp up your yumminess, you get fresh herbs. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have fresh basil. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna put some in it, and we're gonna put some on it. Okay. I wonder if you'll change your attitude when you taste it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I won't be doing that today. <laughs> So let me get the eggs going. Okay. And what you're gonna do, or I can do it, whatever you want, is mm -hmm. we wanna put the plum tomatoes. We just wanna do a layer of plum okay. tomatoes. And if I could get right in this drawer, mm -hmm. please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, just make it pretty. You now know. it's called margarita because there's two stories. Oh, okay. One is there was a queen who was tired of her French food and she had the chef make pizza with plum tomatoes and cheeses, so they called it margarita because that was her name. Okay. The second one is margarita is also some language for flour, okay? And they made a flour on the pizza in the, with the meat. Where so, but home keepers would you ever learn this? Seriously. We uh, are, so it's not an alcoholic? Uh, it's not spelled the same, mm -hmm. no. And it's not the same, no. Mm -hmm. I will say, I think I could really, really like this. Um, I've never worked with those kind of eggs, but I don't have a diabetic problem. Thank the Lord. We got diabetics in our family, and it's it's a curse. It is. My brother-in-law suffers with it. And in, I mean, right now he's suffering. He's got neuropathy in his feet, and we're yeah. praying for him. And so if... Um, I'm turning this. I'm cranking this up high. So if this kind of food is, is better, I'm glad we've got some cookbooks like this. Yes, so. and I'm sorry that I don't like it. <laughs> well... <laughs> I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I just don't get turkey bacon. I just don't get it. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. But well, some people like it, so that's okay. We have, you know, different tastes. Different that's, strokes for all, different folks. That's... We're all different, and that's okay. Okay, so I crank this up. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, we have a layer of plum tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the scrambled eggs with the basil over the top, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put the turkey bacon right over the top of that. I'm gonna put cheeses over the top and we're gonna bake it for just a few minutes and all you're doing is really melting the cheese. Yes, because the crust is already baked. But this whole idea, if you're fortunate like I am to not have diabetes, uh, this whole idea I think would be a great hearty breakfast. I, I love be... like breakfast pizza with regular bacon or ham mm -hmm. or sausage and- And real eggs. eggs. And real eggs, yes. Uh-huh. I think it's very pretty when it's it comes It's gorgeous, out. look at it. So, trying to get through the crust. I'll, I'll trade you if you want. Okay. Okay. You do this. Okay, go <laughs> for it, girl. So these take a lot longer to scramble, is that the story? Uh, they, yeah. Oh, we got a pizza cutter, look. <laughs> right there on the... Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. We couldn't get along without you. That's. That's the fact. Who knew we had fancy stuff like that, huh? Oh, look. I, I believe, though, if you have children or grandchildren, they would love this for breakfast. Okay, trade. Okay. Yeah. Okay, those are starting to scramble up now. Yeah. I'm going to take just a little bite. So, again, you put the plum tomatoes on, you put the eggs over that, you put the bacon on top of that, you put the cheeses, and then mm -hmm. you put it in the oven, you let it melt, and then you put a, a little bit more fresh basil over the top. It is, it is really good, and you send a kid to school with that in their tummy, they've had a really hearty breakfast. So, if you would like this recipe, even after... <laughs> <laughs> she asked me to be honest. I wasn't going to be. I was just going to smile through the whole no, thing and be happy. We don't want... Stephanie to be anything but honest and I think that our viewers know whether or not they would like this and so it's available it doesn't cost you anything and that information is coming up on your screen right now and if you've not heard about the ministry of Joyce Kelly you're going to be thrilled stay with us if you would like a copy of today's recipe you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen when requesting a copy through the mail be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome uh, Joyce Kelly back, and she's the founder, I believe you're the founder of I Am Freedom Girl. 
And uh, boy, it's one of those ministries that very, very few people would ever know exists if we didn't have television. So thank God for Christian television. And if this is your first time to hear about this, uh, you're, you're going to be blessed. I want to go over your background a little bit. I first ran into you when uh, I went with my daughter to a Bible study and you were teaching and girl, you were excellent. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. Do you two do any teaching at all now? I do. I mm -hmm. teach a Bible study at my church. Mm -hmm. We just went through First and Second Peter. So it's a passion that I have for teaching women who they are in Christ and knowing that you can get in the scriptures for yourself and study them and, and apply it to your life. So mm -hmm. I, I love it. Did you grow up in a Christian home? I did, mm -hmm. I did. So I grew up, was, uh, accepted Jesus when I was eight. My entire family was baptized at nine. And um, because my family didn't understand the authority of the scriptures, there's some things that touched our family that kind of tore us apart a little bit. So I think that's part of my passion is teaching moms and women and young girls who they are in Christ and that authority through the scriptures. So that doesn't happen. There are levels of Christianity and there understanding mm -hmm. and boy, there's so much power there that we don't utilize. Right. Like we should. Yes. Um, and you, you married how many years? 27, 27 years. 27 years and yes. has twins. I have twins or 21, up. Grant and Sydney, yes. So I wanted our viewers to know you a little bit better. When did, when in the world did you get the idea? I mean, we got this pristine Christian girl here. <laughs> uh, she's going in these strip clubs and nightclubs, um, in the sex trafficking business to minister and try to win. How did you get into that world? Well, it was God's idea because mm -hmm. <laughs> that, would not, sure have, that would not have been part of my story, uh -huh. but he just awakened me to the reality of human trafficking probably like 13 years ago and really saw it on Christian Television Network and it was in India and they were putting little girls in cages during the day mm -hmm. and my daughter was about that age at the time, they're nine and 10 year old girls and then pulling them out at night to be used and abused and I, uh, it oh. was a burden that has not left since, but I, I didn't know what to do about that. And mm -hmm. so through a series of events, the Lord showed me that this is in your backyard. You don't have to go to India mm -hmm. and you're going to play a part in this. And through just a series of events, found myself in my first strip club and God was like, this is where I'm calling you. Describe the first time you... <laughs> well, the, the, well, the first, I mean, I was scared and I, I, I didn't know what to expect. And I dressed like, you know, they told us to dress really low key. So I had a baggy sweatshirt, no makeup, but my hair pulled back. And they're like, just be yourself. You don't have to like somebody, you look like you're homeless. And it was like... Well, did you go into kind of get a feel for what it was? Or? Well, I, I went through a training because there was a Tampa team. Oh, okay. And so there's definitely a training. So I went through the training and went out with Barbara New who started the first strip club ministry. And so went out with her. She had already paved the way. And so we went in and- I can't imagine going in their cold turkey. It was, it was very eye opening, but it was there that God showed me that the freedom I've given you, Joyce, and me, I need you to take it to women in your city that are desperate. And so will you say yes? And mm -hmm. so I couldn't help but say yes to what God was asking me to do. And one I would put in the miracle category is that uh, you pretty much welcomed. Yes. By the owners or the managers. Or, yes. Why? Except for God and a miracle. Right. Well, God opens the door, but I think that we're welcomed and we're known throughout the Tampa Bay area because there's nine different strip club ministries that cover all the strip clubs because there are so many. Praise the Lord for that. And they're all covered now, which is a true blessing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, they know the church ladies aren't coming to judge. We're not coming to cause trouble or to pick it outside. We are truly coming to love these girls right where they're at, to pray with them, to give them a beautiful gift and just show them the love of Jesus right where they're at. And so I think over time, the managers, they trust us and we, we go with that. And we, we are very respectful of the owners and the managers. And it's been, it's been an incredible, well, at least six years old in August that we've been doing this. So that, that is amazing. I can't think of a tougher ministry. I'm sure there might be, mm. but uh, can you give me the composite of a girl who works in this industry, uh, how old are they? Their, what's their background? What's their educational level? Well, they, they come from every background, mm -hmm. from, from 18 to in their 40s, church raised to not at church at all, mm -hmm. um, girls that are trying to pay for their schooling, 
girls that have come out of the foster care. There's really not one type of girl that you would think these are the types of girls that would be in there, but mm -hmm. you're finding girls that grew up in the church, know the scripture. You have incredible God moments in the dressing room with scripture and prayer time. And, um, and then you find girls that don't even know Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's been fascinating just to see um, the different types of women that are in there, all desperate, all desperate. And the majority of them don't want to be there, but feel they I, have no other choice. I can't imagine anybody who would want to yeah. be there. Yeah. I saw, thank God I've worked so much I don't ever see the view, but <laughs> I saw just a clip that somebody ran at night and uh, Whoopi Goldberg was sitting there really kind of painting it as a really honorable, you know, these are just hardworking girls. Our culture has gone yes. to that, yes. gone to that level. Yes. And are there any girls in there that like what they're doing? You know what? They may they might say that, mm -hmm. but down deep, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, no little girl grows up and says, "I want to be a stripper and I want men to use and abuse me." And I no, I, I don't believe the majority of them that we talk to don't mm -hmm. want to be there. Feel like they have no other choice. A lot of single moms trying to provide for their kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I I don't. And then we do we glamorize that. Hollywood has glamorized it. It isn't glamorous. It's it's. Just I can't a, think of anything worse. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Um, What's the pay like? Are they well paid? It depends on the club. Mm -hmm. it, you've got different levels of clubs. You've got clubs that the girls sometimes don't make anything at night and they've been there eight hours. And then you've got girls that are making thousands of dollars a night. So you can see where the money would be That enticing. would be a lure. Yes. yes, yes. Is it difficult to leave? I th it, it is because how are they going to provide for their kids? And a lot of them don't have education, or if they do, they've got to have a nine to five. Um, and so they can they can go to the club, work a couple nights, especially if they're one in the higher end clubs, and then be home with their kids. So it, it's, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. And then the two biggest things that the draw is the money and then the addiction. Because you have to drink and do drugs to do what you're asked to do, that, that pulls you in even further. I think I knew that. I didn't mm -hmm. consider. So most of them have a substance problem? A, a lot of them do, yes. In or, yes. Really, most of them in order to be able to do it yes. at all. Yeah, we've met a lot of girls like that was their, like the night we went in was their first night dancing and they were nervous and they were just like, I've got to take a drink or do something to take the edge off. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we just try to pray with them and talk with them. And yeah, and it's interesting that the older women in the clubs will tell them, don't stay in here too long. You won't get out. So it's very interesting. How how old would the oldest one be? We've had we've met girls forty seven. You're kidding! Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. That is so sad. Tell us some stories. To me, you're walking into Satan's stronghold. Mm -hmm. Do you sense a demonic? Mm. Yes. Power when you walk in. We do. And we, I mean, we spend time in prayer the day of. We have prayer intercessors that are praying for us while we're at, mm -hmm. while we're out. But yeah, there is. But what I do sense is when we walk in there, it's almost like I've felt it several times is where the Lord just pushes back all the evil. He ushers us in. He has us do our thing and then he pulls us back out. But there's been several times where you can sense uh, demonic activity. And so you just speak out the truth over that. And sometimes just say the name of Jesus and every knee has to bow um, at the name of Jesus. In fact, we had an incredible encounter in the parking lot with a gentleman who was going back and forth with um, God. And I was talking about Jesus because I always say Jesus because when they say God, I'm not sure who they're talking about. So I clarified Jesus mm -hmm. and he started talking about the Quran and I started talking about the Bible and he all of a sudden started saying Allah. And I said, Jesus, Allah. G and he bowed down to his knees and cried out. And I'm just standing there going, wow, that scripture at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And oh, it was, <laughs> it was, it was happening in the parking lot. And then he just got up and went into the club and I just stood there. It wasn't until I drove away that I realized what had just happened. So you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're just trying to always be prepared. If you uh, sitting with goosebumps like I am, <laughs> I, uh, or if you just tuned in, I'm talking to Joyce Kelly and the information is on the screen. I am Freedom Girl is the name of the ministry. And as we said at the top of the show, th this is really the devil's ownership. You know, this is this is a real stronghold. And 
if you get on her email or prayer list or anything, you will see the great, great emphasis she puts on prayer because you need that. You need that covering when you walk in. And when you said you could walk in, it's like you whisper the name of Jesus, something, things change. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the power yes. of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, not just a, a memorized verse of some kind. No. no. And so uh, I noticed in all the communication I received from you, there's a great emphasis. Yes. Yeah. We the can't, preparation. We can't go without being filled with his power because if we go in our own strength, we will not make it. Mm -hmm. So it's like whatever might be happening in your life, you have to put that aside, ask for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit because every time I pray, when our cars hit the driveway of those clubs, the atmosphere has to change because who we take with us, mm -hmm. the power that raised Christ from the dead, the power that raised the dead, mm -hmm. and that's who we take in there. And we go with great expectation for the Holy Spirit to move and we see him moving time and time again and mm -hmm. we'll be going out in the clubs. Give us uh, your routine when you go in. Uh, you, you have to you know, have a certain empathy with the girls. Yes. You take gifts, right? We do. We take a hundred gifts. Um, we go to four cl four clubs, and we have an I Am Freedom Girl Calvary team, and they go to five clubs, all in the Clearwater area. So we take um, gifts for each girl. What are the gifts? Um, the gifts have usually like a lipstick or a nail polish, something beautiful that I would want to use. Mm -hmm. And then we always have a snack. We have scriptures of who I am in Christ, and then we put my business card. And we have a creative director, Pam Spell, who makes it just beautiful. And and then we take a basket full of um, goodies and Bibles and devotionals into the dressing room, baked goods. Um, we do a meal a month and just bless them and with no expectation of anything in return. Everyone in that club is asking for something and I, we're not asking for I anything. I just got this uh, vision, <laughs> this basket full of devotionals. It, it is. And that is the first thing that they get. They go and they grab the Bibles or they grab the devo or children's Bibles and they read story after story. I've been reading this children's Bible to my kids and they love it. And it's powerful. Okay. Now I know that you probably need money to buy these things. We do. If, if the Lord's touching your heart to help this ministry, they can contact you through the website, right? Yes, there's a way to give online as well. I'll tell you one thing I've learned in the Christian walks, when the Lord says give, do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it and forget it. Yes. And you know down the line, he just hands it right back to you. Does. A lot more. <laughs> yes. So I, I would encourage this because this ministry, Satan's paying the highest prices for it. It's insulting, it's degrading, it's dehumanizing. It's every kind of bad emotion that you could put into a young girl's life. Yes. And uh, God bless you for doing it. Thank you. you told me a story. Do you remember what you told me before we yes. came in here? Yes. All right, tell the viewers yes. that yes. one. Yes. Well, we had gone into this one particular club and left, and we always get items that they need hairspray, tampons, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, we usually keep that for next month, but the team member said they need these things. And I said, let's go to Walmart right now, which I never say that. Mm -hmm. So we went to Walmart. It's midnight. There's 25 people in line and they're looking at me. And I said, Jesus is going to move that line by the time we check out. And we got back and they'd opened more registers and there was only two in line. And I was like, okay, he's answering right now. If <laughs> yeah, you got a prayer he's request. In this. <laughs> so we went back to the club and the girls were like, why are you back? I said, we just wanted to bring these. But the Lord had positioned us to be ready to receive a dancer that was coming back into the dressing room who had just been experienced the most evil that she'd ever seen. And she was having a physical response to that. And so I asked her if I could pray for her and, and really, as I said, the name of Jesus, she was having a physical response, but we just kept praying by the Holy Spirit. And finally her body calmed down. We gave her a Jesus calling. And then a couple months later, two of my team members prayed over her a right now prayer. Like they were just, and one of the other dancers was like, I want in on that. And it's like, it's for everyone. The and Lord. then last month we went in and she was so excited to see us that she was, I'm leaving the clubs. I found a job at a construction company. And so we're praying that she continues to move out. Mm -hmm. But for the Lord to show us this whole process and how intentional he was mm -hmm. to position us and to have us go back. Go to Walmart. To go to Walmart. <laughs> Red at midnight, clear a Walmart line because you know <laughs> that happens. So, um, but it was just so um, touching to us that God is in the detail of every person's lives. Mm -hmm. And are we listening and will we say yes to his direction? 
-hmm. and, and knowing that he was orchestrating and he didn't want her to be by herself. He wanted church women in the dressing room to pray over her and speak life to her. So it was very profound. I, I really believe you've, you know, delivered a message. I want viewers to understand this is not mass evangelism. This is not where they come forward after a good mm -hmm. message. This is going into the gutter mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. humanity mm -hmm. and picking up one at a time. Yes. yes. Um, do you ever get discouraged? Yes, <laughs> but I, when I do, I, the Lord reminded me, this is a seed planting ministry and you're not gonna see thousands delivered right. and set free and say, well, although we're asking for it, we're mm -hmm. asking for mass <laughs> deliverance and salvation. Close these businesses <laughs> down. down. But in the meantime, he said, you are making a difference and so trust the process. And so we often every month go by faith and know that there were huge seeds planted and then he shows us something like this girl mm -hmm. and this process and it, it's worth it. I mean, if, if for, because somebody asked me one time, what's the success rate? And I said, we're 100% successful because every time we walk into those dark places and bring the love of Jesus, that's success. And let them know that we love them and we're not judging them. We're not church people judging them. We just love them. And we're women that need prayer too. And just come along. And you them. can't save them anyway. No, no. <laughs> so yeah. Glad the Lord didn't put that responsibility on <laughs> yeah. us, but yes. I'm telling you, every time you come here, I just, I'm just so thankful at how the Lord really gets his people in the places that you would probably never even think about. Right. And I'm so thankful for you. And you said all the, all the major clubs in this Tampa Bay area are pretty much covered with ministry. Yep. Yes. Praise the Lord for yes. that. Yes, that was Barbara New had started 14 years ago with mm -hmm. the first strip club ministry and was praying for the workers. and. Mm -hmm and we all came. Mm -hmm. Well, for the viewers, I, I think I know you well enough to know that you have really been touched. And I, I see a couple levels here. Thank God for Christian television. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what- That's how I that's found how that out. started. Yes. Uh, a lot of people can criticize, but I'm telling you, when you get the work of the kingdom done, and then also thank you for supporting Christian television, uh, that in this way we can really expand the kingdom and Joyce, I would almost put this in the uttermost parts mm -hmm. of the world, mm -hmm. not yes. necessarily the other side of the planet. So thank you for supporting us. <coughs> Pardon me, and I hope you got that information. The Lord puts it on your heart to support this ministry so they can keep taking those good gifts, you know, into these girls who need a savior. Every one of us has been lost, and we need a Savior, and that's what they're doing. Please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 